You ever wanted to play 100 1v1 games? Yeah, didn't think so. But for some reason, I did. I spent a week playing 100 1v1 matches, all of them on stream and documenting my process. My wins, my losses, and what I was learning and changing along the way. Now, because it was all on stream, I had my chat observe and give me a few pointers as well. And if you want to get involved in some more future videos like this, head over to my Twitch and follow me there. Depending on the response this video gets, we might end up doing 100 2v2 matches as well. But let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Filmora, which is great because it's what I used when I started YouTube myself. Filmora was so easy to learn because of the amount of effects and transitions built into it already. If you're looking to get into editing, I highly recommend testing out the free version to see if you like it, and then diving in and buying the full version once you realize how good it is. They are also doing a green screen competition at the moment where you can win prizes ranging from a Filmora license all the way to a drone. So get involved, give the software a go, the links will be in the description, and I'd love to see one of our community's very own taking the drone. So at the start of all of this, I was sitting around Champ 1 Division 1. My first 20 games went pretty smoothly. It was very even, win a game, lose a game, pretty standard really. The things we picked up from the first 20 games however were very important for the rest of the games. The idea was, if I could sort out my major flaws early, we should be able to see some decent improvements. The things we picked up on early were that I was too focused on a fast kickoff and not so much a consistent kickoff. This is why you saw a kickoff video from me recently as it was something I looked into changing very early on. Another big thing I found in my games and that I'm sure you'll be doing in your own is playing on autopilot. This tends to happen once the game becomes predictable, which means you will also be playing predictably. Playing on autopilot keeps me making the same simple mistakes over and over again without realizing I'm making them, so thankfully my chat pulled me up. We found that I was playing a little bit too risky at times and I needed some work on my boost management as well as my shadow defending. So then comes the next 20 games. This section goes a lot better. My kickoff has improved and I've really focused in on every game. Once I stopped playing on autopilot, I found that I was reacting to things a bit quicker and was able to somewhat predict what my opponent was going to do next. This also might come down to me playing against the same 6 people over and over again because Oceana, but anyway. I spent a decent amount of time watching over some high level 1v1 gameplay and felt like I should try speeding up my gameplay to match this. So I did. These 20 games I felt a lot better about my gameplay, I felt like I was playing faster and being more consistent across the board. But I actually ended up losing more games than I won. After reviewing the 20 games, I realized I'd let my mentality get in the way of my gameplay. I would play faster, but make more mistakes and end up being a little hard on myself. I wasn't used to playing at this pace and it was causing me to slip up over and over again. My shadowing still needed some work and I needed to play more aggressively. Whether you like it or not, bump and demo plays in ones are incredibly useful and so why not use them to my advantage? The things that had already changed my game and gotten better were my kickoffs, not playing on autopilot and playing less risky. So in just 40 games, even though we might not be winning every single game, we were starting to improve my overall gameplay. The next set of 20 games went much smoother. I got adjusted to this faster style of gameplay and played almost like a complete ball chaser the entire time, which was actually really fun. I stopped caring about everything and just focused on how fast I could play, how much pressure I could put on my opponent, and how many mistakes I could force them to make. My recent troubles with shadow defending kind of went out the window once I started this style of play, because I stopped letting players have any time on the ball whatsoever. However, this wasn't always a good thing. Players began to quickly notice and started flicking faster to catch me off guard. I knew this was coming, but I still pushed myself to see how much I can get away with before they would beat me every single time. From here, I started to change the pace a bit. Once they'd gotten used to me playing this speed, I slowed down a little bit. They would be so used to me being right next to them that once they had a little bit of space, it was a lot harder to read my movement. This gave me time to focus on my shadowing finally. Once they were unsure about how much time they had on the ball and when I was going to challenge them, I had a lot more success with my defending. This also played into me being unpredictable. While 60 games is a lot to play, it had already taught me some of the fundamentals of 1v1s. I was changing up speeds, playing a fast game with maximum pressure and then slowing it down later in the game to keep them guessing. My kickoffs were going well and I was focused the entire time. 
So this session, we had picked some different things to work towards for our next 20 games. We realized that when I was conceding goals, it was to do with my awareness and my lack of tracking my opponent. For this reason, we decided I need to work on my camera control and keeping track of not only where the other player was at all times, but when the boost would be spawning as well. Another thing we looked to work on was fake challenges. With my mindset currently being so heavily focused on speed and pressure, I sometimes forgot that fake challenges work equally as well. So taking this into the next 20 games, I was very happy with our process. We had already eliminated the original flaws in our gameplay, not fully of course, as there was always more to learn with everything in this game, but taking care of them to the point where they weren't so much a weakness anymore, they had just become another aspect of my gameplay that was keeping up. So how did the next 20 games go? Really badly. I don't know if it was a general mindset thing or the fact that I was having an off day, but nothing seemed to work. I found myself being outpaced to everything, getting on the wrong side of all my 50-50 challenges, and generally not being able to score once I had the ball. If you think ones is tilting already, try playing ones with 150 people coaching you at once, which gets even more tilting when one of those coaches asks you for advice about how to get out a goal a few minutes later. So yeah, this was not a great time. I lost the majority of the games. I stopped enjoying myself and everything about my gameplay felt bad. The only positive from this set of games was that I got to really look into what mistakes I was making. So I wrote down a lot here. I found that I'd taken on the fake challenges tip too much and wasn't really fully committing to challenges most of the time. And by not committing, all of the 50-50s were weak attempts and would leave me coming out of the challenge in a worse position than my opponent. From these 50s, my recoveries were pretty poor and my general speed had slowed down completely. I was playing a weird, slow, aggressive playstyle where I'd get really close to an opponent, kind of half fake challenge and basically just give them a whole lot of time to shoot some easy shots. Bottom line is, something needed to change. While I had worked through a lot of my initial mistakes and flaws in my gameplay, I had found myself trying to incorporate too many new things into my gameplay at once and ended up just playing to a level where I didn't know what I was doing and why I was doing it. I simply just started trying to do the things I'd seen in high level gameplay, but with very little success. Something had to change. So before the final 20 games, I sat down and looked over all my notes from the past few days. I tried to pinpoint the aspects of my gameplay that helped me the most, and the ones that were just temporary fixes for bigger problems. And boy did I find something. So, we head into the last 20 games. I played the first two games, just warming up and trying to figure out this new playstyle I'd pictured in my head. We lose those games, but then from game 3 to game 10, we win every single one. I was on fire. Everything I did, I understood why I was doing it. I could plan a few steps ahead and I was able to keep a positive mentality because I could see the reasons behind my actions. For once, I was playing to a style that worked, that I could use every game and wasn't dependent on how I felt or how good I was playing each day. Then I dropped a game, but carry on to win 15 out of the last 20 games. The final score out of this whole 100 game total was 53 games won, 47 games lost. And while you think that might be very close, my 1's rank went from Champ 1 Division 1 to Champ 2 Division 2. This meant that the level of players we were coming up against along the way increased, and at times we actually beat a few Champ 3's as well. So what happened in these last 20 games that sent me on this sudden winning streak? What did I change that so drastically caused my gameplay to improve so quickly? Well, once I went over all my notes, I decided that one of the things that seemed to have really impacted my gameplay and my playstyle was the idea that I had to play faster and do things that the pros were doing when, in reality, I couldn't do those things. I could put myself in the same situations as the pro players, but I didn't have the mechanics or the game sense to actually capitalize on being in those positions. This is what led me to being out of place, having poor recoveries, not shadowing well, or everything. I tried too much to copy top level players without being able to play to their style. So I went the opposite direction. I slowed down, I kept grounded as often as I could. I would only shoot with a flick when I had the boost to recover if I missed. The change was insane. The crazy thing about it was even though I slowed down, my positioning got better which maintained the pressure. I wasn't speeding all over the field to get in their face, I was positioned in a way that let me move at my own pace but still gave them very little time on the ball. By staying relevant to the game, even without speeding everywhere, to your opponent it feels like you're always in the right place. 
They don't have much time to control and set up because you've stopped taking risks. You're grounded and nearby. Any wrong move by them means you can go in for 50-50 where you already have the advantage. I was always able to stay one step ahead of my opponents. So, what did I learn and what do I recommend taking on board in your own gameplay? Well, firstly, stop flipping around the field all the time. It locks you in the motion of flipping and means that you can't do anything until the motion is complete. By not always flipping, you have a lot more you can do at any given time. This makes you unpredictable and allows you to challenge at any time. On offense, the main thing I took away from this was to only shoot with flicks once you have a decent amount of boost to recover. If you miss the shot and the motion of the flick sends you towards the goal, you need to be ready to get back and defend or apply pressure to your opponent. With low boost, you're making an all or nothing play. You either score or you miss and your opponent gets an easy counterattack goal. This leads me to my final point, which I think everyone should think about when playing ones. You don't win the game, you lose it. 1v1s is a game of mistakes. You get scored on when you make a mistake. If your opponent hits a nice shot, there is still something you could have done to stop it. So, despite me wanting to play faster and apply more pressure, it was leading to more mistakes. The less mistakes you make, the more you're going to win. Once I focused on slowing down my game and playing a consistent, better position game style, I found myself having more success. You don't need to force your opponents to make mistakes, as they're eventually going to happen. You just have to do your best to work on your own gameplay and keep your mistakes to a minimum. 100 games of 1v1s was a challenge, but one that I am very glad I took on. If you want to see me do the same with 2s and 3s, let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe to the channel and keep updated with my weekly uploads. The links to my other social medias are in the description if you'd like to follow me on those as well. And if you want to join me on my live streams, head over to my Twitch channel. I stream pretty much every day and I would love to see you there. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you next time.